Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about uh, double fed induction generator. So on the video on the right side you will see a black machine. This machine is a standard induction motor. On the left side the green machine is called double fed induction generator. So what does this setup does is that the black machine or induction motor will drive the green motor and the mechanical energy from the uh, DFIG or double fed induction generator will be converted to electrical energy and send this energy back to the grid. Just now we have uh, showed double fed induction generator inside the machine room. In order to operate the system safely, we place control apparatus outside the machine room. So this is the overview of the apparatus that controls double fed induction generator. So basically the double fed induction generator is controlled by two back-to-back -back inverters which is shown here. You will see two inverter and the DC link of these two inverter are connected in back-to-back -back mode. As I said, the DFIG setup is generally controlled by two inverters connected in back-to-back -back mode. The inverter on the right side is called grid side inverter. It is a standard three-phase inverter, which means it has six IGBTs. The purpose of this inductor is to control the DC link voltage of DFIG setup so that this inverter, which is on the left side, it is called rotor side inverter, can manipulate the current being injected to the rotor side circuit of DFIG setup. On the right side of back-to-back -back inverter, we have these black boxes. These black boxes are actually sensor box. The purpose of the sensor box is that they will measure the current and voltage information of double fed induction generator and send this information to the controller for control. How do they do that? So this, you can see this is the current channels. These are the voltage channels. Each box can measure up to four current and four voltage channel. And such information is being sent by this cable to this signal junction box. And from this signal junction box, you can access individual current or voltage information and you can send this information by these BNC cables to your controller. So here we can see our controller here. It's called D-Space controller. Basically it's a micro controller, but it's programmed by Simulink. So these BNC cables come to the analog digital port of this space controller and here we have this PCB board this PCB board is used to translate the PWM switching firing pulse command from this D space controller to fiber optic signals these fiber optic cables will be connected to the inverter here so that the inverter can be controlled Remember we have an encoder which is mounted on the shaft of DFIG. So this cable comes from the encoder and it will feed the encoder output to the D-space controller so that the speed and the rotor position of DFIG can be read by the D-space controller. And then according to this information the D-space controller will control the rotor side current of DFIG. Now let's move to the top of the D-Space controller. You will see this device. It's called National Instrument MyDAC system. What, what is the purpose of this device? Well, the purpose of this device is that uh, we'll have to construct a virtual wind turbine model because this is a laboratory setup here. You can see we don't have an actual wind turbine in this room. How can we emulate 
the dynamic response of a wind turbine generator while we use virtual models. Such model will be implemented inside this D space controller, which is here. However, in order to communicate the wind turbine model information outside this space controller, we will have to use this MyDAC devices to send the information out from this space to the VFD that is controlling the wind emulator inside. So this device basically functions as a communication link between this space and outside devices. So this computer, you can see, this is MATLAB Simulink. So this is how we program this space controller. We do not write C code. We use MATLAB Simulink. You can see this is actual code that is needed to control this setup. It's very complicated. Why it's very complicated? Because we have 12 IGBTs to control. That is the reason this is complicated. So once you finished programming the control algorithm for the DFIG, the next thing you would have to do is to generate C code. So you will see from the MATLAB that uh, a C code has been generated and downloaded to the DSpace controller and the simulation state is run. The next step for DSpace controller is that you have to open a software called Control Desk. Basically, it's a human-machine interface. This interface is designed by myself, but you can see you can control a lot of things using Control Desk. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the IGBT inverter for the grid side, and I want to stabilize DC link voltage. So here is my reference, 700 volts. Right now, it's 580. Look what happened if I press this button. You see? The actual DC link voltage is following my reference value. So if I ramp it up, it will go up. If I ramp it down, it will go down. So I want to DC link voltage to be stable at 700. You see it is now working fine. Now let's run the motor. So if I press this button, the wind emulator is running. Right now the speed is 1200 rpm and the torque is 1.5 Nm. There is no load on the double-fed induction generator. This scope is now mirroring two voltage signals. The yellow one is the line voltage from the grid. And uh, the RMS value for the yellow signal is 415 volts. And the blue one is the voltage from the double-fed induction generator. Right now, there is no current in the rotor side of the circuit, so there is no voltage from the stator side of DFIG. So we have stabilized the DC link voltage at 700. Now I'm going to inject some current into the rotor circuit of DFIG. So I press this button, and now we are generating some uh, voltage on the stator of DFIG. So if we look at the scope, you will see this blue signal. This signal is the stator line-to-line -line voltage from DFIG. The yellow signal is the line-to-line -line voltage from the grid. Now, now I have stopped the scope. I want to see in details about these two signals. The yellow signal and the blue one. First observation is that these two signals have the same phase. So if I superimpose yellow with blue, you see they are in phase with each other. 
Now, what about the magnitude? The magnitude of the yellow signal, which is from the grid, line to line voltage is 415 volts. It's difficult to see from the scope what is the magnitude of this blue signal, but we can use fast Fourier transformation or FFT from the scope. So this represents the fundamental component of this blue signal. Each division is 100 volts. So we can see the magnitude of the blue signal is 420 volts, almost the same as the yellow signal. This is what we call grid synchronization. It means the voltage generated by DFIG is the same of the voltage that is from the grid side. Only under this condition can we close the switch between DFIG and the grid, which is located here. So if I close this switch, there is no transient because the two voltage on between this switch has the same magnitude and the same phase. The grid frequency is 50 Hz and uh, because we are now running at 1200 rpm the frequency from the rotor side of DFIG is 40 Hz so in order to generate a 50 Hz voltage on the stator side of DFIG we will have to inject about 10 Hz AC current into the, the rotor side circuit of DFIG in this way we will generate a 50 Hz voltage on the stator side of DFIG. So that is how DFIG works. It compensates the speed difference between the grid frequency and the rotor frequency by injecting some AC current into the rotor side of this machine. Because we are constantly compensating the speed difference between DFIG and the grid, so no matter what speed we are running, we will always generating a 50 Hz voltage at the stator side of DFIG. So you can see now I'm running the speed of DFIG above the synchronized speed. We are now at 1700 RPM. 1800 RPM. If I look at the scope, I can see that uh, no matter what speed I'm running, the stator side of DFIG is always 50 Hz and uh, has the same phase and same magnitude as the grid voltage. Now the DFIG is in standby mode. It doesn't generate any power because the wind speed is not good enough. It's 6.8 meter per second, which is the cutting speed for this generator. Suppose the wind speed suddenly increased from 6.8 to 12.0 meter per second. What's going to happen to DFIG? And we can see that the rotor speed of DFIG begins to increase. But gradually, the rotor speed will increase to 1950 and the power generation level of DFIG also gradually increase from 0 to 100 percent but it takes time for the DFIG to accelerate from idle speed to full power speed why? because we are emulating a real wind turbine for a real wind turbine of 2.5 megawatts there should be a lot of inertia in the rotor blade and for big inertia rotor blade to accelerate from standby speed to full power speed it takes time same thing happens if I reduce the wind speed from 12.0 to 6.8 and gradually the wind turbine loses speed and goes to standby mode but it takes time it's like stopping a big truck it takes time and distance to stop the truck 
So this is interface for virtual wind turbine. And the CP, this parameter, measures the efficiency of the wind turbine. It means how much percentage of mechanical energy we can extract from the wind. So if I have a sudden wind change, the efficiency of the wind turbine initially drops because the speed is not fast enough, right? And as we have increased our speed, the efficiency of the wind turbine began to increase. And also power generation level begins to increase. Now we have reached the full power condition of DFIG. Let's take a look at inside the machine room. We are now running in full power mode. Full power. This black motor is emulating the wind turbine, as I showed you before. This green generator is DFID. The power is going from this black machine to the green machine and then go back to the grid.